Up until the 1500s, visual inspection of the human body for the purposes of medical diagnosis and treatment was limited primarily to external observation. Internal observation was really only possible once the individual was deceased. It wasn't until 1895 when we gained the ability to peer inside a living patient, thanks to the invention of X-ray technology by German scientist Wilhelm Röntgen. Since then, there has been dramatic advancements in diagnostic imaging technology, with newer techniques such as MRI and CT scans providing us with incredibly detailed images of the human body than ever before. These detailed studies are helping doctors provide earlier and more accurate diagnoses, leading to more individualized treatments. But even with these breakthroughs, our current technology has its limitations when it comes to the management of certain conditions, one of which is low back pain. In this video, we will discuss why diagnostic imaging should not be utilized in most cases of low back pain. Low back pain is one of the most common orthopedic conditions for which people seek care. An estimated 25% of adults have experienced some degree of low back pain in the past three months. But despite its prevalence, 95% of low back pain cannot be attributed to any specific anatomical cause using current imaging techniques. This is because imaging techniques have been shown to have high rates of false positive and false negative results in those with low back pain. To highlight this, let's look at a study that sent a single patient to 10 different MRI centers over a period of three weeks. The authors found large variability in reported findings between centers, as well as high number of interpretive errors in the reports. Not a single imaging finding was consistently reported across all 10 of the imaging centers. It was concluded that with all things being equal, where a patient obtains their MRI examination and which radiologist interprets the findings can have a direct impact on the patient's acquired diagnosis, selected treatments, and outcomes. Even when imaging studies are accurate, their findings are often not reflective of the patient's experience. There are numerous studies looking at groups of individuals without any episodes of low back pain, and they show high prevalences of degenerative changes. In those over the age of 60 years old, 36% were found to have a herniated disc, 21% had spinal stenosis, and over 90% had degenerative or bulging discs. So regardless of clear findings of spinal degeneration, none of the individuals in these studies reported any episodes of low back pain. Another study performed an MRI on individuals at baseline, and then performed a repeat MRI later on if any of the same individuals were to report an onset of low back pain. In those that reported development of low back pain, 84% of the individual's MRI findings were unchanged compared to the original image, with some of the findings seeming to improve even with development of symptoms. This study further highlights the lack of relationship between low back pain symptoms and what is observed on the image. Not only do imaging studies have limitations in identifying the cause of pain, but studies have also shown that there is no difference in patient outcomes, including patient reported activity levels, pain severity, quality of life, or overall perceived improvement in those who received imaging versus those that did not. There are even some studies suggesting that the use of imaging itself can have the potential to lead to greater harm. One study took an MRI of patients with a new onset of low back pain. Half of the patients were told of the findings of the imaging study, and the other half was not. At one year, both groups had similar outcomes, but those who were not made aware of the imaging findings rated their general health higher compared to the group that was informed of the findings. It's kind of like finding out you had to fly down all day. It didn't hurt, but you're not feeling great about it. Imaging studies can also directly impact the patient's course of care, even leading to more invasive procedures. Those who have experienced a recent episode of low back pain and received an MRI were shown to be three times more likely to undergo surgery. This is attributed to the imaging study finding some form of structural abnormality, such as a herniated disc. But despite correcting this abnormality, the majority of those who underwent surgery did not experience any appreciable improvements in outcomes in the following years. This again can be attributed to the lack of correlation between findings seen on MRI and the cause of low back pain. So you may be asking, when is it appropriate for those with low back pain to receive imaging? Well, according to the American College of Physicians, diagnostic imaging should only be performed in those with low back pain when severe or progressive neurologic deficits are present, or when serious underlying conditions are suspected based on the patient history and physical examination. In patients who present with signs of sciatica or spinal stenosis, MRI should only be utilized if the individual is a potential candidate for surgery or epidural steroid injection.
If not, the patient should not receive imaging and instead receive comprehensive conservative care. Just like our outward appearance changes with time, so does our insides, with many of the changes seen in the low back being quite normal, almost like anatomical gray hairs. For these reasons, routine use of diagnostic imaging for low back pain is greatly discouraged as it does not enhance patient outcomes, may negatively impact the individual, and often does not add any additional value to a thorough physical examination performed by a trained provider, such as a physical therapist. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Physio Show. Make sure you like and hit that subscribe button to receive more physical therapy related content.